if there's any effort to like legalize psychedelics, there has to be, I think, a real sense that everybody could have access to this therapy in a safe environment. And, uh, you know, that, that again ties into social political issues, that ties into a critique of capitalism, that ties into a critique of a class society, you know, where certain groups of people have privileges over others when it comes to access to resources. And again, like you've pointed to, taking psychedelics does not necessarily mean that you're going to get that or that you're going to fight for that. No. And I mean, I would even say that expanded access um, to psychedelics, which I do advocate for unequivocally. Um, but it, I think it's going to put that assumption to the lie because there will be people who, um, you know, they're evangelical Christians um, or they're, um, you know, the full spectrum of beliefs um, that would like to get some of the benefits of, of psychedelics, be it for um, for healing or for cognitive exploration. Um, and a lot of people's morality uh, is dictated by what's legal. I mean, I just mentioned evangelical Christians and much of their um, opposition to illegal drug use is that it's illegal and that, you know, God commanded them to obey the rules of the land. And, um, well, if those rules change, we may have, you know, some um, some change, some buckling in, in seemingly impenetrable cultural walls. Um, when that happens, you know, those of us who've been interested in, um, uh, the carriers of the flame of, of psychedel psychedelia may may have to create some room for some some folks that uh, we wouldn't usually consider to be part of that community. Um, and I guess you know the 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 point that I'm trying to make is like we if we really do believe in in certain um, certain ways that the world would be better, we should advocate for those things directly. And I mean. I will say that if we're talking about, you know, some kind of political, um, you know, result that broader psychedelic use um, could could lead to, you know, I would say that some of it just comes back to the realm of, say, public health. So, I mean, one one could argue that, um, you know, greater access to um, housing. And affordable health care is going to change people's uh, likelihood of uh, joining the military, for instance, um, where these social prog programs are typically lavished. You know, one joins the military and one has a number of benefits, uh, everything from, you know, special mortgage rates to uh, free college, you know, so. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and I mean, that just to speak a little bit outside of this discussion i think that's one of the biggest things that maybe people don't consider with bernie sanders maybe becoming president if he could get to that that point is uh mm -hmm. you know it's not just a, a threat to insurance companies and uh i guess the medical industry as at large talking about medicare for all but like you said if you take the pressure off of american citizens if you take if you give them a sense of like social safety nets or well-being uh it's going to completely change the dynamic of, of what choices people are going to make in their everyday lives including the military as you pointed to yeah so i i think that that's a big part of it if people are going to fight for uh making the world a better place i mean uh psychedelics i think fit into that as a part of the the i mean i think for instance like i think just speaking to the research that's been done into dealing with ptsd and addiction is is powerful and needs to be taken very seriously and, uh, you know, I think we do have a traumatized population. A lot of us are dealing with intergenerational trauma, I think, in many Absolutely. ways. You know? and I so, would say most of us. And I would say in the proper context, psychedelics can help pull those things up and allow you to analyze and break them down and, and heal. You know, I think that that's something that needs to be stated. And we're talking about context, though. So that context is, you know, are we doing therapy here? You know, so um, one of the things that I specifically critique is is that the Carhartt-Harris study um, says, like, we saw a reduction in authoritarianism and authoritarian beliefs um, in participants in our study um, that was therapeutic for treatment-resistant depression. The 
examples, the counterexamples that I provided in Lucy in the Sky with Nazis was, well, here are a number of individuals who did not undergo psychedelic therapy, um, but who are, for example, neo-Nazis, uh, who clearly seem to enjoy psychedelics. And, um, you know, so what about them? I mean, if, if the drugs themselves are not able to, um, you know, cure somebody of some, um, you know, purported ideological disease, um, then we can only assume that, you know, psychedelic therapy for some kind of ideological um, dysfunction is what's being advocated for. And that gets us into a whole host of sort of brainwashy territory. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and I mean, uh, you know, I think that I think that we, you know, you mentioned MK Ultra earlier. I think we're we should be rightly extremely skeptical of the medicalization of psychedelics because guess what? We already did that. Um, horrific human rights abuses were uh, perpetuated by some of the captains of the the psychological fields in the 50s through the 70s with MK MK Ultra, where people were um, you know, inducted un- against their their will into these experimental procedures, where they were given LSD uh, for 50 consecutive days, um, pump pump full of barbiturates, and played emotionally charged statements uh, on loops and headphones while they slept. Um, and this was not the cartels doing this. This was the captains of uh, pharmaceutical and um, psychological fields. These were you know, people doing work for uh, the government. They were working with the CIA. They were working with the military. Um, Lots and lots of prisoners were subjected to uh, these kinds of experimentations with psychedelics. And, I mean, I would say it's one of the reasons why it's actually difficult to have an honest and open public discussion about psychedelics. And and it has has taken until now uh, to get to that point because some of those people were still alive. Some of those people who are the heads of these, um, you know, profoundly unethical programs um, still held tenure at, <laughs> at different colleges. Um, so, I mean, you know, whenever that kind of topic comes up, people sort of uh, start to roll their eyes or feel a little bit uncomfortable because we're starting to get into territory that you know sounds like something from Alex Jones or some conspiratorial thing, and yet you know these things are part of public record. 